Okay, hello. Uh, we are group one. Today we will have a company financial analysis about DSG Pharmaceutical John Stock Company. And now we will briefly go through the company background. Uh, the forerunner of the company is uh, September 2 Pharmaceutical Factory, and it was converted into John Stock Company on 1974. And about some milestone in 1996, the, the, the company was elected as Vietnam high quality goods by the customers and also be complied with the GMP standard. In 2006, it was added to the Ho Chi Minh Stock Exchange, and 2019, it was included in the top 10, uh, uh, also top one in the trusted pharmaceutical company. And now let's move to the shareholder structure of the DHG is included uh, for main part. And now let's move to Minh Khoa part. Thank you for mentioning me. And let's move to the, the number two analysis of profits, loss, and balances. And part A reveal at least three consecutive years of the company and indicate the following. First, let's indicate the amount of total current assets. Here I have taken three years, 2019, 2020, and 2021. And first, uh, let's talk about the current assets. In general, the amount of total current assets had increased in the last three years. From 2019 to 2020, it increased by 11%. From 2020 to 2021, it increased by 7%. In more detail, from 2020 to 2021, we witnessed a sharp decrease in cash and cash equivalents by negative 46% due to the reason that in 2021, over three months term bank deposits were used as a collateral property for the HG pharmaceutical plant development project. So let's move to the analysis of non-current assets. In general, the amount of total non-current assets had decreased gradually in the last three years. From 2019 to 2020, it decreased by 4%. From 2020 to 2021, it decreased by 8%. In more detail, we witnessed an intense upheaval in long-term account receivable. Long-term account receivable decreased sharply by 47%, but then bounced back strongly from 2020 to 2021 by 153%. About long-term work in progress, from 2019 to 2020, it increased sharply by 130%. This increase mainly came from the purchase of more machinery um, to serve expanding projects such as GS project, BGT project, REB project, etc. And let's move to the analysis of the amount of total current liability. In general, the amount of total current liability increased by 16% from 2019 to 2020. From 2020 to 2021, it decreased by 7%. In more detail, from 2019 to 2020, we witnessed a strong increase in short-term trade account payable, increased by 110%. That strong increase was because in 2020, DSG has a new trade account payable for its main suppliers, such as private limited sentient, and the rise in the amount of trade account payable for pharmaceutical Netherlands B. B. And let's move to the analysis of the amount of total non-current liability. The amount of total non-current liability decreased minimally by 2% from 2019 to 2020 and increased by 6% from 2020 to 2021. And there are just two components for non-current liability. There are provision for long-term payables and science and technology development funds. The Science and Technology Development Fund has decreased gradually in the last two years because of depreciation expenses and without being added more. And next, Tham, Tham will, we, will be back for stockholder equity. About stockholder equity, we will include four main points. And the first two is owner equity and capital surplus. Uh, they remain the same in the three years. And there is a significant change in the investment and development fund. In 2019 to 2020, it's increased by 6% and also 11% from 2020 to 2021. About the distributed after tax profit, uh, there's increase 
is 16% from 2019 to 2020, and also 5% in the next two years. And in general, the three years was increased, the total was increased by 6% from 2019 to 2020, and also 6% in 2020 to 2021. And now let's move to the next part. So here, let's take the analysis in comparison with Chapaco balances. Chapaco is Yu Kao Yang main competitor in the market. And here I have compared its balance sheet in 2019. In more details about current assets, if short term financial investment was the largest proportion in the SG, then Chapaco, the largest proportion of current assets, was inventory. The SG debt came mainly from short term loans, while Chapaco debt came mainly from long term loans and just a very small proportion from short term loans for Chapaco. Next, let's do the analysis for the years of 2020. In more details about current assets, if short term financial investment was the largest proportion in DHG, again in Chapaco, the largest proportion of current assets was inventory. About non-current assets, fixed assets accounted for the largest proportion in both DHG and Chapaco. In Chapaco, debt to assets ratio was 29%, while this ratio of DSG was just 20%. Next, let's do the comparison of the years of 2021. In more detail about current assets, again, soft term financial investment was the largest proportion in DSG. But in Chapaco, the largest proportion of current assets was still inventory. Um, in Chapaco, um, debt to assets ratio was 26%, while this ratio of DSG was just 18%. DSG debt came mainly from short term loans, while Chapaco debt came mainly from short term trade accounts payable in the years of 2021. And next, let's move to the part B of number two. Um, hello, now we'll continue, continue with part B to reveal the most recent year's income statement. About the total operating revenues in general, uh, in three years, there's in 2019 to 2020, they gained 3.74%. And in addition, from 2020 to 2021, it increased uh, by 2.7% from about 3.9 billion to 4 billion. And now let's move to the comparison between two companies, Trafalco and DSG. In 2019, uh, there's a big differences in two companies. Uh, is the difference is about 228% uh, comparing uh, DHG with Trafalco. And now let's move to the cost of goods sold. So in general, the total cost of goods sold in 2019 is um, about 2 billion and it fall by 10.9% in 2020 to 1.9 billion. Despite the decrease in 2020, the total cost of goods sold is increased by 7.10% in 2021 to 2.08% Billions. Now let's move to the comparison between two companies. Uh, also, there's a significant change in 2019. It's about 284% comparing DHG with Trafalgar. Okay, now let's move to the total expense. Uh, <clears throat> the, the total expense of DHG and Trafalgar can be determined by uh, uh, using, using a using three yearly financial statement of DHG and uh, Trafalco. And in, uh, from 2019 to 2021, the total expense of two firms con continuously climbed. Uh, to be specifically like uh, the change in uh, 2019 to 2020 is uh, of our DHG is 0.26% uh, and um, the change in 2020 to 2021 is 4.04%. Um, the traffic call, uh, they have a significant change in 2019 in, uh, to 2020 by 8% and in 2020 to 2021, uh, it's increased 7.49%. And why it's happened? Because of the breakout of the uh, COVID pandemic, the uh, uh, expanding Cura, like um, from uh, closing the business, uh, from working online and paying <clears throat> for the um, 
taxes when you have an have met, um when you don't have much in income so when compared to tropical uh expand it uh, search uh, approximately eight percent and nearly double of those DHG and we can see that the DHG they have uh, the better like uh, cost control and uh, operating during the pandemic. And next will be my partner. So about the non-operating income, this is a portion of an organization income that come from activities that are not related to its core business. So in general, the non-operating income of Yu Khao Yang was outweighed traffic in the last three years. However, the non-operating income of Yu Khao Yang was dramatically decreased. Um, this is because uh, Yu Khao Yang's non-operating income mainly is come from uh, liquidation of fixed assets and other items. So this so that a large amount of fixed assets were liquidated by Yu Khao Yang in 2019 in order to renew machinery and technology suitable for future business activities to achieve higher efficiency. Um, as in the next slide, we have the comparison chart between two companies, and we can see that the operating income of Yu Hao Yang is uh, higher than Trafalco in three years. So next thing is about only common share, aka EPS. Next, thing, next slide, please. So EPS is a company after tax profit distributed by common share outstanding in the market. So it's calculated by net income divided by common share outstanding of company in the same period. So it's obvious that the EPS of two companies has positively increased in three years. However, the EPS of Yu Hao Yang was higher than Rafaco each year from 2019 to 2018. Uh, 21, showing that uh, Yu Hao Yang stock would be more attractive to investor, as we can see clear in the um, uh, comparison chart in next slide. So uh, this is my part. Now we will move to the ratio analysis. Okay, and now this is my part to do the ratio and your analysis. The the liquidity ratios. First is the liquidity ratios. The liquidity ratio analysis uh, is the use of uh, several ratios to determine the ability of a company to pay its bill in a specific time. Um, this uh, analysis uh, is important for uh, the lenders <clears throat> to uh, see, uh, to determine if they uh, lend the uh, company or not, or the investor to invest in the company. And you can see this uh, two table right here is the ratio uh, of Yu Khao Yang and Traffic Co. Uh, next will be the current ratio. The current ratio um, uh, calculate by the method uh, above. And this help uh, us to know about the company ab ability to pay the short term um, short-term liabilities or one-year abilities. You can see it right here, the current ratios uh, of both company, uh, Yu Hao Yang and uh, Yu Hao Yang and Trafalco is more than uh, 1.0. This is a good sign for a companies and DHG increased the, their current ratio uh, by 15.26% because they have um, increased uh, by 245 billion uh, Vietnam dollars in 2021 in the current access and the liabilities decreased just by 57 uh, billion dollars by res resulting uh, in a big, a huge increase in the current ratio. And the traffic have the same scenario, but uh, uh, Yu Khao Yang uh, current ratios is almost double the Traffico ratio, which mean they have uh, good um, short-term debt repayment capabilities. Next will be the quick ratio. The quick ratio used to like uh, uh, determine the ability to meet the short-term obligations uh, uh, with uh, it mostly uh, like the liquid assets. 
And it's quite similar to the um, current uh, ratio of two company. You can see both corporations have the ratio more than one. Um, and this number are quite uh, healthy. But, um, and the Yu Kao Yang quick ratios um, remain stable at 7.7%. Uh, but the traffic but traffical increased by 17.39% because of um, their inventory not just in, not increased, but they declined by 89 billion Vietnam dong, which lead to the raising of the quick ratio. Uh, even though if it climbed higher, it still uh, have a smaller amount of ratio than the Yu Kao Yang. And finally will be the cash ratio. The cash ratio measure the company liquidity in relation to it. Uh, current obligations based on the total cash and uh, cash equivalent. And you can see there a big difference uh, from the others to ratio. Like uh, the traffic they hold like cash uh, six times larger than the uh, Yu Kao Yang. And the Yu, Yu Kao Yang in uh, 2021, they have like a huge decrease in holding cash, but this uh, may this effect in their financial statement and uh, how the lenders uh, and investors see their financial status. But when they have um, when they have uh, a, a vast uh, inventory or they uh, sell credit to um, sell credit to customer, this is still okay. And next will be my partner, Ang, will introduce to you the efficiency ratios. So thanks, Min, for introducing me. I'm Ang, and next I'll show you the analysis of the HG's efficiency ratios. Let's take a brief definition. Efficiency ratios measures how efficiently the company can manage its assets to re sales. When a business manages its assets efficiently, its owner and stockholder have a better chance to gain better profit in the long run. So to evaluate how well DHG manage its assets, we focus on three important ratios, inventory turnover, receivable turnover, and total assets turnover ratio. First, let's talk about the inventory turnover ratio. As you can see in this table, from 2020 to 2021, DHG's in inventory turnover decreased by 12.48%, reducing the inventory Inventory turnover means the firm managed its inventory less efficiently than the previous years. One of the main causes of this problem is Yu Kao Yang will need to store a large amount of inventories in 2021 to meet the demand from citizens and treatment center uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Next slide. Next slide, please. And compare with a big competitor, Chavaco. Chavaco has a higher inventory turnover ratios in 2021, about three, about 2.76 compared with 2.19. However, it does not really confirm that DHG is weaker than Chavaco because based on DHG's strong financial potentials, in 2021, the company stored 2.6 times more inventory than Chavaco, leading to a lower inventory turnover ratio than the competitor. And now let's move to the second ratio, receivable turnover. The receivable turnover ratio determines the average number of time a firm collect receivable over a certain period, showing the effectiveness of the organization's credit extensions and collection activities. It shows that the HG's receivable turnover ratio grew by about 1.03 in 2021 compared to the previous years. So it suggests that Yu Hao Yang recovered are receivable from customer more successfully than in 2020. Next slide, please. However, when compared with travel goal in 2021, DHG's year receivable turnover ratio is much lower than travel goal 8.14 compared with 11.97, notion that DHG must take action to improve um, receivable management. And the last ratio to measure efficiency is the total asset turnover ratio. It shows the big picture of how well DHG can manage its assets to generate sales. 
uh, this table demonstrates that the HG total asset number ratio increased slightly about 1.02% from 2020 to 2021. Based on this trend, the company is doing a better job of moving assets to generate revenue. However, the raw rate is still low, which can be explained by the difficult period for the uh, pharmace pharmaceutical industry. Next slide, please. When compared with Trafalco, the HG's total asset turnover ratio is lower than the competitors, suggesting that uh, Yu Hao Yang should invest more in asset management. So this is the end of my part. And next, we will present the next part. All right, thank you, Ang. Uh, my name is Yu, and we continue with the long-term service ratio. Well, long-term service determines the extent to which a company's cash flow can pay down its long-term debt. The song the solvency ratios are a crucial statistic for evaluating a firm's financial health and may be used to predict the chance that a company will not be able to pay its debts in full. So this ratio also helps us assess a company's ability to meet its long-term financial obligation. And we can calculate this by this formula, uh, divide a company after tax net income and depreciation by the sum of its long-term liabilities. Next, please. So here is a table that shows you can get on it. All data is about net income, depreciation, long-term liabilities, and most importantly, the long-term solvency. So first, in net income, this is the revenue a organizational receive after cost allowances and taxes are subtracted. In the world of business, net income is the amount that remains after all the costs, such as uh, you can yang payroll, the price of goods or material, taxes, and have been paid. As we can see on the table, you can yang net income in 2021 has a significant growth of 4.96%, equivalent to 36.7 billion Vietnam dong. This profit growth can be mainly explained by the increase in sales of manufactured goods. Yu Hu Yang focuses on selling strategic and key products of the company, especially nutritional products and related products to treat the COVID-19, such as uh, Habaco, Clementine, Metalon, and Pocalex. At the same time, the company has managed and good receivable and inventory to help improve the cash flow, increase the company efficiency. Next, please. Oh, no. I'm going to next slide. Go back, go back. In depreciation, this is a way to determine how much uh, an asset value has decreased as a result of usage, uh, deterioration, and obsolescence. Most assets lose value over time after being purchased. When assessing their performance and calculating the cost, businesses must take this declining worth into the account. So as shown in the chart, the depreciation of your Hao Yang fixed asset of, has decreased by uh, 4.3 billion Vietnam dong, corresponding to a decrease of 4.93% in 2021. So uh, explaining this, when your Yang sells or retire an asset, its total accumulated depreciation is reduced by the amount related to the sale of the asset. Uh, in the total long-term liabilities, these debts, which a corporation owns the third-party creditors and uh, which are due beyond 12 months, are also known as the long-term liabilities. So this set them apart from the current liability, which a business must settle within a year. The Korean long-term debts had a slight increase from 63 billion to 66.8 billion in 2021, equivalent to the 5.99% growth in the long-term debt. The Korean long-term liabilities are listed after the softer liabilities which in part may include the liabilities, loan, deferred taxes, and uh, pension obligations. Next, please. And uh, as shown in the chart, uh, the long-term service of Yu Yang has a negligible decrease in 2021, about 1.97%. Meanwhile, long-term service in uh, both 2020 and 2021 is relatively high, which is, uh, which are, 13.1 and 12.8 respectively. This proves that Yu Hao Yang has a strong financial capacity. So compared to its big competitor in the pharmacy industry, Trafalco in 2021, Trafalco will um, achieve a net profit up to 64 billion, much lower, almost one third compared to Yu Hao Yang while depreciating fixed assets quite similar to Yu Hao Yang, which is uh, 30.6 billion Vietnam dong compared to the 38.8 Billion Vietnam dong. Uh, however, Trafalco long-term solvency is better than Yu Hao Yang in 2021 because they have paid off their long-term debt, which are a uh, seven-year loan from Vietnam Bank from 2015, 
and a five-year hanging environmental protection fund from uh, 2017. So next, uh, Jung will talk about the profitability. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So the value of profitability ratio. So these are the class of financial metrics that are used to assess the business opportunities to generate earnings related to its revenue, operating cost balances assessed, or shareholders' equity over time using data from a specific point in time. So here is, there are five components of profitability ratio and also those um, formula. So next slide, please. The first component is gross profit margin. So this represents the profitability and competitiveness of the business. So if the value of the GBM is high, it means that there is a very good profit opportunity. It also has to track or evaluate the profit growth in the company and compare it when, with the profit rate of general competitors in the market. So the collected data has shown that uh, the gross profit margin of Trafalco in 2021 and 2020 is higher than Yu Khao Yang. Moreover, the, with the higher GAPM, Trafalco has given a good profitable um, opportunity and competitiveness with uh, competitors uh, in the same industry. Next slide, we will have um, the variation chart and we can uh, easily to observe that the uh, GBM of Trafalco outweigh the GBM of uh, Yu Hao Yang in two years. So now next slide, we will have the operating profit margin. So this is a measure of how much profit a company makes from a $1 of revenue. And high volatility operating profit is a key indicator of a company business risk. So it's given in the table the operating margin of Yu Hao Yang is greater than those of Trafalco in 2020 and 2021. So this demonstrates that uh, Yu Hao Yang has made more profit per sales and less operating cost. Moreover, with the high fluctuation of OBM of uh, Trafalco, indicate this um, company business risk, and this is also need to be concerned as we have uh, in the next slide. That is a comparison chart, and we can see that um, the OBM of Yu Hao Yang is outweigh the OBM of Traffic Gold. Next slide, we will have the net profit margin. So this reflects how much after tax profit in $1 of revenue of the business. It evaluates uh, the performance of the business, whether the company uh, generates enough profits from itself or not. So it is no surprise that with higher uh, operating profit margin, Yu Hao Yang also uh, uh, has a much higher net profit margin compared to those of Trafalco in 2020 and 2021. So this shows that Yu Hao Yang has, com has more um, competitiveness than Trafalco while it's generated more after tax profit. As we can see in the next slide, uh, we have the comparison chart. And the next information is about uh, return on access. In next slide, please. So return uh, on total access, aka ROA, uh, reflect the relationship between profit and total access of the business. So it's so how efficiently a company use its access with the higher the ROA, uh, the more profit a business can make from its existing access. So according to the data in the financial statement uh, of both company, it is obvious that the total assets of Trafalco are just about uh, 37% of total assets of Yu Hao Yang in 2021. However, the ROA of um, Trafalco in 2021 is approximately um, 92% that of uh, Yu Hao Yang, as we can see in next slide um, comparison chart. So this show that Trafalco has utilized its access more effectively. And the last uh, component is return on equity, aka ROE. So it is a measure of uh, the profitability of an investment per dollar of capital spend. So with the higher the ROE, the more effectively the 
the enterprise use shareholder capital. So Yu Hao Yang's ROA is higher than Trafalco in 2020. This proves that Yu Hao Yang has used shareholder investment capital more effectively in 2020. However, the uh, COVID-19 epidemic explained the, the decline in ROA of Yu Hao Yang from 2020 to 2021. 20, uh, but this is a negligible decrease, only is about 1.3%. And despite difficulty during COVID uh, pandemic, Yu Hao Yang Pharma uh, focuses on selling strategic and key products, effectively managing distribution network and engaging with customer. So this has assisted Yu Hao Yang uh, in maintaining its uh, ROA ratio and position in comparison to all a competitor in the same industry. Uh, next slide, we will have the comparison chart. So we can see that in 2020, the ROE of uh, uh, Trafalco is much lower than Yu Hao Yang, but it has increased dramatically and uh, become higher than Yu Hao Yang in 2021. So that, that is all about profitability ratio and uh, the next part will be the conclusion presented by Kwa. Hello, and let's move to the final part of our presentation, the conclusion part. So in conclusion, in the last three years, 2019 to 2021, Yu Hao Yang stock company has continuously rolled and demonstrated itself as the most prestigious pharmaceutical company in Vietnam. And about the conclusion about the ratio analysis about liquidity, the HG company has a good liquidity ratio in the period 2020 to 2021. And the majority of it is rated than other firms in the same industry. Therefore, it can be claimed that the HG is a reliable company for investor to lend to. About efficiency, from 2020 to 2021, Yu Hao Yang has an ability to effectively utilize assets to generate revenue. However, in comparison to big competitor, Tafago, Yu Hao Yang three efficiency ratio are still lower, which implies the company must do more to manage its assets. About long-term solvency, plus businesses company like DHG, with efficient director, board director, and employees to handle tax long-term debt, uh, debt problem quite well because they usually have large net income during the year for large and mass production and trading activities. And finally, about profitability. After calculating on components of the corporate profitability ratio, it's obvious the DSG outweighted Chapel Gold in generating profit when comparing the 2020 2021 period. Moreover, despite the fluctuation, DSG continued to sustain its ratio over the years, while Chapel Gold has witnessed some striking points with the incredible increase. And that's it also at uh, the end of our representation. We do hope you enjoy watching our video. Thank you so much.